when I released my review of Artemis Wanted Number One and why that was such a bad cobble book, I had a lot of people come into the comment section. They said, Wes, you haven't even seen the worst of the week from DC Comics because you haven't talked about Dark Crisis Young Justice Number Two. And quite frankly, I had no plans whatsoever to read the damn book or talk about it because the first issue was just so bad, I had no intention to ever revisit it again. I don't know who Megan Fitzmartin is. I don't know why this person is employed by DC Comics. She literally has no track record to speak of, not only just not selling comic books, but not writing them whatsoever. I assume that she's some type of YA author or whatever, and DC Comics has decided that all of a sudden she can write superhero comics. This is one of the most hateful, worst constructed comic books I've ever seen in my life. I think this probably trumps or at least competes with Batgirl number 50 from Cecil Castellucci, which is an absolute abomination. Megan Fitzmartin is not a comic book writer. I don't think she sees herself as a comic book writer. I think she sees herself as an agent of change, someone that's going to come into this old, disgusting comic book industry with all your straight white male privilege, and she's going to destroy everything. She absolutely hates the characters. She hates the readers. It's insane the amount of meta commentary in this comic book. And it really flies in the face of the character's history, who they are. It flies in the face of the readers and really tries to paint anyone that's against her changes of Tim Drake as like homophobic. She uses Batman essentially as a stand in to criticize people that had issues with her enormous change to Tim Drake, which also affects another character by the name of Stephanie Brown. Those two characters happen to have been together for a very long time, for decades at this point. Shockingly, when you make a major change and all of a sudden Tim Drake's like, you know what? You know, Steph, we've been together for years, but I'm just not interested in you anymore. I'm going to age myself down six years and I'm going to start dating a boy named Bernard that nobody remembers. And people are like, wait, I kind of like Tim Drake and Spoiler being together. They've been together forever. And it doesn't feel like a natural progression of the characters that they would interact this way. He pretty much dumps her off panel. It was terrible execution. She got some feedback. And this is her way of letting you know you can go to hell. This is hateful towards the readers. It's hateful towards the characters. It's hateful towards the history. It's hateful really towards the entire comic book industry. That's how I'm reading this particular comic book and the commentary and narrative that Megan Fitzmartin puts into this. I was going to try and talk about the story itself and highlight a few issues here and there, but there are so many issues, I can't even get into the story because that would be another 15 minutes of commentary about why it doesn't work. If you want to read this story, go read The Flash. Jeremy Adams is essentially doing the same type of story, but doing it well in the pages of Flash. I don't know how this is attached to Dark Crisis. What Joshua Williamson told us is Dark Crisis is a celebration of the history and legacy of DC Comics. Whereas this comic book here, Dark Crisis Young Justice, takes an enormous dump on the history and legacy of DC Comics. And I can't blame this all on Megan Fitzmartin. She's never really written a comic book before. The blame really has to fall on Ben Abernathy, one of the executive editors at DC. He just got promoted. Normally, he's one of the more solid group editors that they have there, as well as Dave Wielgoss, another one of the editors that normally isn't an enormous dumpster fire. But their names are attached to this, and the blame for this piece of crap comic book fall squarely on their shoulders. They hired her. They're the ones that okayed this story, and they're the ones that got this ready for publication. DC Comics needs to start looking at their editorial staff and making some hard decisions because there are so many people. It's not just the writers. You have to start saying it's on the editors because those are the names that are really going across the board on all these bad stories. Let's talk about all the stupid shit that happens in Dark Crisis, Young Justice, and why Megan Fitzmartin is easily one of the worst, if not the worst, superhero writers at Marvel and DC at the moment. A lot of times I talk about current comic book writers, they don't care about story, they only care about message, and this comic book is a prime example of this. In one of the opening pages, we finally see Cassie Sands Mark on the real world because we're bouncing between this and the multiverse. Cassie is trying to talk to Arrowette and get her to help them out because they used to be on the team together. And this moment that you see right here means nothing, absolutely nothing to the story. This character, Liz, never shows up in another panel. It's only meant to virtue signal on the behalf of Megan Fitzmartin. And the person I feel worst about 
other than the people that actually spent money to read this comic is Laura Braga because her art is actually pretty darn good and it's absolutely wasted. She wasted a month of her life, likely, illustrating one of the biggest piles of dog shit DC comics have ever produced. Here we see Liz, this is Cassie, she, her, Cassie, this is Liz, they, them. I'm guessing you didn't come to study chemistry with us. And that is the entire contribution of Liz to this story. A stupid ass, lame, virtue signaling pronoun panel. And that should tell you just how bad Megan Fitzmartin is as a writer. And it only gets worse from here. Shockingly, this might be the best bad thing that happens in the goddamn comic book. It's clear when you read this that Megan Fitzmartin, if she's read anything about Young Justice in the past, it was very, very brief. It was maybe an issue here or there. She doesn't really know the characters at all. And this is her just taking an enormous shit on the history of the Young Justice and these characters. Cassie is approaching Arrowette and trying to get her to help her. We saw that in the last issue. She says, you're telling me you're more worried about college than your oldest friends. This is what Arrowette has to say. I'm more worried about a world without a Justice League than a world without Connor Barton Tip. That makes that character come off as extremely crass and kind of a bitch. Then she continues, besides, I don't have the same bright, shiny memories of our childhood as you do. I only remember fighting people the Justice League didn't understand, like women, people from other countries, folks who are just doing their best. So apparently the Justice League, whenever they saw like poor people out there or women in need, they would send in the young justice to take them out. That's what this character is at least implying and inferring within the story that young justice were specifically targeting women, people from other countries and folks who were just trying to do their best. They were never actually fighting villains. They were just fighting victims. That's what Megan Fitzmartin wants to tell you about the history of Young Justice. Absolute slap in the face to the creators of Young Justice, to the characters, for anyone that's ever read a Young Justice comic book and loved it. But it only gets worse from here. Arrowette continues chastising Cassie Sandsmark and putting her in her place. I stopped being a superhero because of the toxicity. Your life revolves around those three boys. You like the mess, don't you? But who are you without them? I didn't want my life to end up like yours. I didn't want my decisions to be overshadowed by three privileged idiots who had the whole world handed to them on a platter while you and I scraped for any attention. Think about the three characters that this character is talking about and really who Megan Fitzmartin is talking about, about their toxicity and their privileged idiots that we're talking about. Bart Allen when they are in Young Justice together, is pretty much handicapped. Back in the day, he pretty much had debilitating ADD. He was also sent back from a thousand years in the future. Can you imagine how difficult it would be to be pushed back a thousand years and have to make friends? And these are the type of friends you got. Connor Kent is literally an experiment. He's a clone of Superman and Lex Luthor. And he's been discarded left and right. He's always the Superboy that everyone forgets, but he's the one that's privileged somehow. He's essentially a test tube baby. But Connor Kent, he's a, just a privileged idiot. And when you think about Tim Drake, the character that discovered the identity of Batman, found Bruce Wayne essentially broken and ready to not be a superhero anymore, and said, you know what? I will take on the responsibility of being your Robin. I will fight for you because I know that you are somebody worth fighting with and essentially brought Batman back to the DC universe. Think about how selfless that is on the part of Tim Drake, but he's just a privileged idiot, according to Megan Fitzmartin. Megan Fitzmartin is the one who shoehorned this weird sexuality change on Tim Drake. And here she uses Batman because they're in a multiverse and you can just say whatever you want. And it's supposed to be a dream sequence. So this never even really happened. But Batman is the point of view character of anyone who criticized Megan Fitzmartin's decision for this sexuality change that hasn't exactly gone over well with fans of actual Tim Drake or Young Justice or Stephanie Brown. But you can't acknowledge the fans because what Megan Fitzmartin is doing is more important than your entertainment. She is fighting for LGBTQ rights by going in and taking someone's creation that has 30 years of history and just destroying it in one page because Megan Fitzmartin is the most privileged person in this entire process because she gets to go in without ever creating anything and going destroying other people's stuff. But Batman gets to let you know that you're a piece of shit if you had anything negative to say about her storyline involving Tim Drake, Bernard, and Stephanie Brown. I'm sure Spoiler would love to get back together with you once you're Batman. 
Tim says, but I don't want to date Stephanie. I'm dating Bernard. And Batman says, but you will. She's your destiny once you're out of this phase. If you had any issues or any criticism of Megan Fitzmartin and her treatment of Tim Drake, you are a homophobic dad from the 1950s. You would want to send Tim Drake to a conversion camp or something like that because your criticism isn't valid and it can only be rooted in homophobia. That is what is going on here. This is meta commentary. Ben Abernathy knew it. Dave Wielgoss knew it. And Megan Fitzmartin thinks you're too stupid to realize she's calling you a homophobe if you had a problem with what she did with Tim Drake. An absolute middle finger to fans of Tim Drake, Stephanie Brown, and Young Justice. But Megan Fitzmartin, she doesn't just hate the fans. She doesn't just hate these male characters by completely bastardizing the history of the team and their place in it. She actually just hates 80s and 90s comics because that's essentially where this multiverse has taken them into the past 20 and 30 years ago. And this is what Megan Fitzmartin has to say about the comic book industry just 20 and 30 years ago. This isn't even our past, this place. It's like our past got the design wrong and going out of its way to be sexist, racist, homophobic. This place is for immature boys. That's not us. If you like comic books in the 80s and 90s and certainly before that, you're sexist, you're racist, and you're homophobic. That's what Megan Fitzmartin thinks about you. That's what DC Comics thinks about you. That's what Ben Abernathy thinks about you. And that's certainly what Dave Wielgoss thinks about you. I feel bad for Laura Braga. This is really good art. But this story is the absolute drizzling shits. And it's worse than that because I could actually tell you about the goddamn story itself and try to break apart what she's doing here because it's absolute amateur hour. You can tell that she's never actually written a successful comic book. But DC continues hiring her and put her on the only miniseries that contains the name Dark Crisis outside of Dark Crisis. This is supposed to be the most important one. It's the only one that's going on at the same time. Even the Flash story, which is essentially the same thing, but with the Flash family, is just the Flash. It's not Dark Crisis Flash. This is the one that has the title on it because you're supposed to read it. DC Comics, their leadership and editorial, are letting Megan Fitzmartin give all of us a middle finger. They're letting her do this meta commentary and let everyone know that the past of DC Comics is evil. The fans of DC Comics are evil, and anyone that criticized her are just outright bad homophobes. This is terrible stuff. This is worse. Now that I think about it, this is worse than Batgirl 50. Cecil Castellucci bastardized the character of Barbara Gordon in that issue, but she never had meta commentary tearing apart the fans, the history, and the character. It was just her being a bad writer. This goes beyond that. If you don't believe me, go check out this review of Batgirl 50 with Eric Breen. This comic book is terrible, but it's not nearly as terrible as Dark Crisis, Young Justice, number two.